Hello everybody, um, I want to welcome you to my first tutorial that I'll be posting here on YouTube. Um, from here and on, um, if you want to leave any criticism, constructive criticism of course, or any ideas on what these tutorials should include, you know, you just leave the comment below and I'll be happy to read those and hopefully incorporate those in the future. Alright, let's get started. Um, this series of shots were taken in uh, last this last winter uh, in Yellowstone um, went snowmobiling in Yellowstone uh, for some reasons but um, I got to see some great wildlife saw some wolves bison um, and some uh, wild birds you know the typical things you would see in Yellowstone very majestic place to be at I highly recommend it <clears throat> so uh, as you can see, I got a, a few series of shots that I, I could walk through. You know, some, some, I got an eagle, the bison that we're going to be working on. These guys were just heading down the road. Um, Grand Prismatic Hot Springs there. Um, a nice large herd near the Grand Prismatic on the Geyser Basin of Yellowstone. Um, I believe that's, yeah, Old Faithful. Uh, some of the uh, mud. Uh, boiling, boiling mud pots of Yellowstone. It's a really majestic place. But today we're gonna focus. Oh, here's an, an elk. Um, today we're gonna focus on this fella right here. We're gonna we're gonna put it on Raiden. All right. So here's the uh, the shot straight out of the camera. Um, typically, what I like to do is look for a good composition. Uh, a lot of the stuff I like to do in the field. You know, you don't want to do a lot of post editing. Sometimes you do uh, have to, so you could recover that picture to the way you want it to be. That's just my opinion. Um, but here's a straight out of the camera. The you know, overall, I'm happy with this shot. Um, I think I'd want to crop in more to focus on the bison and less away from the land. Um, as you can see, I got this snow pole right here. Not too happy with that, and I think that takes away from it. Um, right away, you open the shot. My eye immediately goes to this snow pole, so we want to eliminate that. Um, we could crop that out. Um, this one uh, slacking bison here, uh, out of the frame, uh, not out of the frame, but out of the the line of bison here, is just not doing it for me either. So cropping. Uh, here's the Lightroom. Uh, uh, so here's your Lightroom editing box. As you can see, so here is your crop. You hit this box. You could keep it locked in, so you could keep the same aspect ratio of your photo, or you could unlock it. When you unlock it, you could crop any way you want. Um, there I undo, go back to lock it, and now when I crop, I keep that same aspect ratio. Sometimes I get out of it, so I know I'm gonna have to get out of that lock box because if I was gonna crop this bison out. I would run into the situation here. So undo, let's unlock this. Then we can just crop that in. Maybe get a more of a portrait shot here. And now I'm using my rule of third. Um, I like to keep this rule being used at all times. So you know, uh, I'll line this up with the bison snout here. Get rid of that little. And then the, the second line here will line up with the second bison and then get the rest of the herd back. Uh, this line will go on top of that bison. I don't want to bring it to the top of the hump because then <clears throat> you drop your bison too low. You know, and then this one will go right on his nose. We'll hit done. All right, now that we got our crop done, then we can start working. First thing I like to do is maybe look at the highlights, you know, just play with that, see what happens. Um, you can line it up more or darken it. I usually, you know, for landscapes, you'll see I'm going to be doing a lot of dropping my highlights to bring the sky back. Shadows, really helpful. You know, this will blow out your shot sometimes with exposure. But if you increase, uh, increase your shadows, it'll just bring light into the shadows. It's a nice thing about having a high dynamic range camera. And there you start bringing it. See? Your whites. A neat trick I learned a while back is if you hold the Alt button and you do whites, you could bring this up and then you start getting this color coming in. You don't want to go past that because then you start blowing it out. 
you want to go to where you'll see the last pixel, which right there, you'll see a pixel up in this corner, and then we'll drop below that. Um, so we know at about 52, and you can see what it looks like before, and then after, get a little white. Same thing with black, you can go the opposite way. Um, hold that, and once you start seeing those pixels come in, color pixels, you don't want to see those, so this is almost where it was at. And again, you don't have to do this. That's up to your preference. These are just different tools, techniques. Um, for clarity, what I like to do is I like to draw up my clarity. I like to play with bulky. Um, you know, get a nice blur in front of you. It, look up bulky, and it, it's, it's a really cool effect when it gives you a picture. It makes your subject pop more. Uh, a cool neat trick I did instead of using brushes a lot, um, you could always drop your clarity all the way and get that bulky, right? So let's say you drop to about 80, uh, minus 70 here. And then what I do is then you go your brush, make sure this is all zeroed out, bring this up to 70 because you drop 70, and then Increase your brush size, and then you can start feathering these guys in. If you want to turn on to see what you're coloring, turn it on, and then paint your bison in. So he comes back in having his own, having his texture back, and then and then the rest of the photo will have this nice blur effect of the bulky, and it really gives it a nice pop. I think I'm going to leave the guy in the back um, a little bit blurred out. Uh, make sure you get that hump. Get this going on here. Get that horn. And now you can see, now you can see what that does to the picture. Now my, my my subject is more in focus, and I like that this one is not in focus no more. Uh, again, if I take that away, you can see what happens. See that? And that's what the, this is with the clarity on the bison. So it's over, over, um, over detailed, which you don't want to do that. So minus 70, you keep that. Uh, one, one subject that I missed here was your white balance. Um, in my camera, I usually just set it to manual, and I play in the field real quick. Is it is it bright out? Is it dark? A golden hour, blue hour? You know, and you get those tones. So, and if you're not correct, the nice thing about doing manual and you shoot raw is that when you bring it into Lightroom, you can make these changes um, right away. So here, I have a, too much of a little blue tint. I and if I recall the scene right, it was a hell of a bit more. Um, Orange tone because we had an overcast. The sun was still low because it was still early in the morning. So we had a little bit of golden hour still just past it. So the bison had a little bit more color to it. So if you can see at my 5300 when I shot, and I can just go shy of that, and that's just perfect. You know, I still have that blue tone in the background, but my bison again more of a smooth uh, brown color to them as you'd see them in nature. Uh, vibrance and saturation. I am a big person of not trying to use saturation in my pictures. I just think it looks overdone. If you know, so you'll see people do this, and you don't see that in nature. Uh, nature is not that bright. Um, you know, if you if you want to give it a little bit of of a bump of saturation just to give emphasize that color more, I believe that's all right. You know, like very subtle. See, that's just very just enough. Um, subtle there of the color vibrance vibrance too you don't want to go crazy because see that you see a lot of that that's a uh, kind of like that HDR photography and you know you, you don't see that with your eye that's it's, it just doesn't work I, I think this is good it gives me more of a natural look our tone curve um, I think that also depends on your shot again a lot of these is depending on how your shot was and I believe every shot's unique. Um, I know if, when I've tried to go out and learn on uh, editing when I first started, um, I immediately learned that I can apply the same 
uh, edits that somebody else did to my shots because they wouldn't look the same. It's not the same photograph. It's not the same lighting. You'll never have that. Um, so with, with the tone curve, you can play around with it. You can see, you know, it, bright, it either brightens up your, your background or your foreground gets darker. So it's, it's up to you what you want to do here. Um, you know, I, I curve my, my tone curve here just a tiny bit, um, over brighten that background and really make that bison pop more like it's almost coming out of the photograph here. Split tone is pretty good. Um, I use this a lot in landscapes shots. Um, you can see if I click on green, it gives you that green and it's nice because you could emphasize just that, you know, your, your split toning between your, your background, and your foreground and, um, you could give that that background more of a bluish tint if it was like that. Now you don't want to go too crazy because you know it's more like a Christmas postcard, um, overdone obviously. Um, but just enough, you know, you you give it enough color there, and um, you can see what that before, after it's very subtle changes to it. Here, um, now this is more of your foreground subject color through shadows, um. If you want to give that bison more of a brownish finish, oh, that's just perfect right there. See that? If I take that away, um, not too much. Again, it's more like the the vibrance, but it just affects your shadows. So maybe like that, and then we before, after. You see how subtle that is? Look, at, take a look at this skin right here. See that? It's just subtle enough. Uh, detailing. Um, now a lot of people will. Um, you know, just increase your sharpening, and what what that'll do is it'll introduce noise into your shot. Now, if you look at my shot, I shot at 3,200 seconds. I could have probably shot this lower at maybe 5.6 and drop my ISO a little bit. Um, here I'm using a Tamron 600. Um, it only lets me shoot up to five, so I could probably drop that to a five and shot at a at a lower ISO. So sharpening, um, here we, you don't want to overdo with the sharpening. What happens is people will increase their sharpening to get a more sharper image of their subject. And what that does is it'll introduce noise. And obviously we want to um, avoid as much noise as possible. So when you print, you get a nice, crisp, clean shot. Now in this shot, I use a ISO 800, which is really nice because um, it was I was able to get no noise and it's almost, you know, it's daytime. So I was able to get a good, clear shot. Um, so what I like to do is uh, a neat trick is if you hold your alt button and you go to masking. So here you see everything you see in white is going to have sharpness. But when you introduce sharpness, you introduce a noise. Um, so what I like to do is even in my landscape shots, when I have mountains, I just want to get the, the edges in there. And there you go. You start to see the outline of the bison right there, and that's what's going to sharpen. Now, you don't want to go too crazy. I'll show you. No, I know, I know that line is outlined. If I turn that off, you can see what the difference is. See that? See that right here? And now watch where I turn it on. It's just a little more details. Now we go to the uh, the horn here. Maybe a little bit more uh, before, after, not that much. Uh, and, the, and the reason you see a little bit of blur here is my the snow falling. I put, you know, w when you have the snow falling and your subject in the back, your camera's gonna bounce back and forth for that focus. So I was lucky here to get this bison uh, as sharp as I could. Um, this is one of the first things I, sh I should have pointed out is enable your camera corrections and what happens is because of the lens all the glass is made differently so if you shoot really wide you kind of get that fish eye and what this will do is it will correct that and you can see that before after um, not that much of a difference sometimes you will see if you don't crop your shot it'll change a lot it actually changes your brightness color so if you go and do your edits and then enable this you have to start almost start all over again because your picture's over. It's blown out. <clears throat> um, noise reduction. Again, if you use high noise, 
I recommend using this, but try not to use it too much. Um, because what happens is once you start fixing noise, then you're you get a soft shot instead of a sharp shot. So that's what happens with noise. It kind of it, the program tells the pixels to come together, almost blend together, and you get a uh, you don't get clarity. Um, and that is it, folks. Um, we got the bison uh, walking down the path. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm going to try to do these once or twice a week with different subjects. Uh, if you give me a second, I could look at my library and show you what else we could be editing in the near future. Thank you. Now, I wanted to share with you the different th things that we'll, we could be editing in the near future. Um, here's one from last year. We have some great bison shots. Um, some of these are blown out, but um, here's some. Uh, oh, here we go. Nice big horn sheep. Nice detail on that. Um, all up in the uh, on the hills there. Nice portrait shot, but somebody got in the way. Uh, let's see what else we got. More big horn. Got a nice little baby one right here. Oh, nice little fall. Snowfall coming down. So, um, some uh, nice big elk here. Look how blurry that is. And I must, might be taking these in my car. Uh, it's a nice big buck right there. If we go to. So we have Chrissy Bears we could be editing. Um, the famous 399. Oh, there she is, the girl's claws. Uh, 399's Cubs. Eagle and Carcass. Um, nice Grizz coming out of the water. I never even seen this shot before. Sometimes it's nice to go back and look through your files. Uh, landscape shots, of course. I got a lot of landscapes from different areas. Uh, great gray owl here. Um, there he is. Look at that. The ghost of the wilderness. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. You see, I got to go back and look at these shots. Well, that's it, folks. Uh, you can see what we're going to be getting into. I hope I can teach you something you can take away from these. And again, like I said, at the bottom of this, go ahead and leave me comments, any ideas, if you have questions on you know, how to fix something. Um, later on, I'll, I'll get more into like how to detail the eye. Eyes are important in wildlife photography, and you can look at my other videos uh, that I'll be posting. I'm, um, I'm posting a lot of wildlife videos. Um, at the same time, I'm doing those. I'm doing some shooting. Um, so pretty soon, you're going to see me doing videos uh, while I'm shooting on the scene and adding that to here and then we can come back here and edit and that'll be another video so you'll have a compilation of in the field uh, and then editing uh, which i think will be great because you can see uh that whole aspect being done okay well um have a good weekend everybody thanks for uh checking this out